I receive significant joy from watching all the creatures who call the garden home. I've started to keep a list of the garden inhabitants and add to it almost every day. I will provide a list of the creatures in this video at the end. If I have identified an insect incorrectly, please leave a comment below. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a monarch flying around in the garden here. There's actually two of them, and the one was in there. I thought, well, maybe laying eggs, so I lifted up the leaf, and sure enough, there was a monarch butterfly egg. So we'll have more caterpillars in about another five days. How exciting is that? Butterflies are one of my favorite visitors because of their beauty and grace, but even the ugly bugs are needed. Recently it was explained to me the food web is an energy web. The sun's energy is used by plants to generate sugars and carbohydrates. While many creatures can eat plants, there is a great dependence by many animals on the transfer of the plant's captured energy in sugar and carbohydrates into protein and fats. Bugs which eat plants are a main contributor to this conversion. Without bugs as a fat and protein source, many creatures would not survive, particularly birds, but also many larger animals. In a future episode, I will discuss the critical role native plants play in support of this energy web. Don't think you have to do a ton of rewilding. Just start small. This is where I started. I put a few milkweed plants and some mist flower and enjoyed the butterflies but I did get hooked. Maybe you don't have a yard, maybe you have a balcony. You can buy some pots and put some flowers in there, support pollinators. There are an estimated 160,000 species of moss and 17,500 species of butterflies in the world. In the U.S., there are 11,000 species of moths and 750 species of butterflies. I suspect this rabbit is the one who has been nibbling on a number of the plants at night, but this discussion is for another day. There are many people who do tremendous work every day to rewild and give nature space. I met one of these people, Jim, who stopped by to talk when I was working in the garden. Jim has given me a number of goldenrod plants and explained the importance of letting Mother Nature take care of the additional space you provide. Jim has beautiful gardens and a beehive in his backyard. One day, he noticed a lot of dead bees. More than likely, someone nearby sprayed their yard to kill some kind of bug or plant they felt was an issue or used a misting system to kill mosquitoes. While many companies preach their systems are natural and safe, when you kill one kind of bug, we kill many kinds of bugs, and in some cases animals. The insects we enjoy, like bees and butterflies, are not immune and will also die. Some of Jim's European honeybees have visited the garden to collect pollen and nectar. What I didn't understand was is that there are 20,000 known species of bees in the world. I really enjoy watching the bees in my garden, and the two spotted longhorn bees are currently my favorite. There have been many bee species visit the garden, but only a small fraction of the 4,000 bee species which are native to the United States. One day I noticed a lot of aphids on my gara plants. I don't use pesticides, but I normally would use my fingers and rub them off, crushing most. For some reason I didn't, and a couple days later I noticed a couple of bugs mowing through the aphids. I had to look them up. They were ladybug larvae. One ladybug larva eats approximately 400 aphids in three weeks. The next morning I couldn't find any aphids. A few aphids did show up in a couple of days, but reinforcements have shown up to eat more aphids. We're having a beautiful rain tonight, giving the plants a well-deserved drink. I hope you've enjoyed the butterflies, bees, and bugs, and will join us on our next episode, Rewilding 4, when I turn over the next section of my yard to Mother Nature, and also review some of the challenges of rewilding, and they're not what you think. Here's a preview. 
Okay, so the next section I'm going to rewild goes from that rock all the way back to the edge of the garden, and then it goes up to the corner of the house. So I've picked up another big section.